Anybody who's watched my videos on YouTube should already know my name, that my name is Ryan McReynolds. And this is going to be the first of a couple of different shout out videos I'm going to be making. Now this one is going to be a shout out to Genevieve Linkowski and her family and also to Corinne who, well, depending on what country you live in, the date of her car accident was February 13th or 13th of February, and I'm pretty sure this video will be watched in more than just the United States of America, plus I have, you know, traveled to other countries and talked on many people from other countries, so it's like, um, yeah. But anyways, you know, I had not really been into watching American Idol to begin with, and why not? It's like, granted, sure, I am a music lover, but... It's probably a lot of brand new acts out there. It's like, most of the ones I'll actually listen to are ones that are like, basically the classification of underground or not that well known or like, unsigned or, well, you know, it's like, such as case in point, uh, Motion Device, so we're up in Canada. The warning or down in Mexico and I actually got to see them uh, at Metal Fest uh, last year and whatnot. But, uh, but, you know, I'm from Michigan and I am a Christian and when I heard about Genevieve Linkowski being an American Idol contestant and that she's from Michigan and that she's a Christian, I was like, wow. Granted, I did not actually watch the American Idol episodes that she was on, but I did start following her Instagram account and whatnot, and next thing I knew, like, uh, well, I've been to a few concerts at the Clive Theater for their uh, Tribute X series and whatnot, although I also used to go down there plenty of times when they had a bunch of major acts on the bill and whatnot when they were that kind of venue, but, uh, anyways, I only got to go to one, uh, show there last year, which was a Shania Twain tribute act, and I, the next thing I noticed, you know, it's like Genevieve Linkowski was listening for who was going to perform the national anthem, and while of other shows that I went to, the performers of the National Anthem, uh, that'd be only the only thing those performers would perform and whatnot, whereas Genevieve, she performed more than that. And there were even some songs where her sister Corinne were, had, you know, performed with her. Okay? <laughs> and I mean, that was pretty awesome to see. And, you know, and, and it's like, and truth be told, both of these girls, it's like, you couldn't even believe how old they are, because, I mean, if you ask me, they were more mature than a lot of people in their age group. I mean, I am not even kidding you, okay? I am not even kidding you on this. And it's like, and probably the Linkowski family member that did talk to the most was actually your dad, Craig Linkowski, but it's like, boom. It's like, sure, Genevieve got to be on national TV and whatnot, and developed some sort of celebrity status, but to me, this was, you know, this was like this, you know, getting to actually have this, you know, kind of encounter and stuff. It was like this one, I mean, granted, sure, I got photographed with Genevieve, although I won't admit I didn't smile in pictures, since I don't always smile in pictures and whatnot, but then again, I am on the autism spectrum, but... Still, I mean, this was one of those things where it's like, you know, I didn't really see Genevieve as, you know, just, you know, some sort of celebrity. It's like, I mean, no. She was, you know, a real, she's a real genuine person, and the same could be said for Corinne, and, and you know, and for the rest of the family, it's like... I mean, boom. 
this, I mean, to me, this was, you know, this went beyond the whole celebrity thing. I mean, and boom, you know, and there's like a group of people from an assisted living place that come to the shows uh, and whatnot. And I remember Jen and Corinne uh, got photographed with a group of people who live at there's this living place called Bentley Manor and uh, for like a group photo and you know I mean that was really good of them both to have you know done that and yeah when I heard about the about the car accident in critical condition I mean not only did I start following Genevieve's Instagram but I ended up following Corinne's as well I've seen her perform live too, and and you know, in looking at statements from Corinne, it's like, I mean, boom. You could have easily thought she was, like, oh, well, if you didn't know she was 18, you could have easily thought she was older. You really could have, you know. And it's like. And I remember, you know, when I heard about the car accident, I private message her Instagram account because I was like hoping she'd make it through this, and I prayed too, you know. And as I know a lot of people did, and one of the prayers I made was about, you know, that she'd make it through this. But I also prayed also that well, if it is her time to go, I prayed, I prayed to Jesus that. Whatever his will is, let that be done, that if he wants her to still be alive, please let it be so, but if it's time for her to go, then let that be so. And, and I'm like, and yeah, I want to go to a funeral and all that and stuff. Since I mean, boom, I live in Bertrand, so you know I border Genesee County. But at that time, it was like, and while I don't drive, and it was going to be a dangerous idea to even uh, try to go down there and whatnot, which made me glad, you know, that it was available on live stream because I did end up watching it live stream and I remember thinking to myself like well before I get to that part you know once Corinne was officially pronounced dead on February 17th or 17th February depending on what country you're watching this from or where you're from well I ended up quickly writing and record writing the song on my keyboard and recording it on my digital four track recorder the vocal on one channel and keyboard on the other. Titled Young You Were. No name is mentioned, but even though I do have songs for sale on uh, bandcamp.com as well as uh, having used DistroKid to get some of my uh, songs available on uh, sites like Amazon and iTunes, uh, Spotify. Napster, Tidal, whatever else you want to name, it's like, boom. I had the song put on bandcamp.com strictly as a freebie because it's like, no, I don't want to make any money off this song. And it's like, no, I don't want anything financial done with it without the consent of the Linkowski family. Like, I mean, if they wanted something to be done with the song for money to be generated to a charity or whatnot, you know, I mean, that would be fine with me. You know, if they wanted that done, okay? That would be fine with me. But otherwise, like, no, you know, I don't want any financial gain from it. It's like, I mean, basically, I want, you know, people to be able to download the song for free. But anyways, boom. But, yeah, you know, back to my thought, though, that, yeah, I was, like, thinking, you know, 
in my mind about that Jenny, your sister Corinne, may be gone, but I think she's going to continue on with your musical ambition and whatnot and not let it die with her. And yeah, when, you know, I heard that, you know, there was no chance that Corinne was going to survive and her parents, Craig and Tamara, had to, you know, make the tough decision on, you know, pulling the plug and all that. And letting her go. I mean, it was like, this is in God's hands. And whatnot, it was like, I mean, I had that feeling myself, you know, that with, pug, with the plug having to be pulled, it's like, miracles can happen, and for some people they have, but still, as a Linkowski family said, and as even I myself had to say, that it was Corinne's time to go. I mean, and you know, when I watched the funeral on my screen, you know, it was like, I'm glad that Jen still sang and played music and all that, and she talked about the times of having to perform without Corinne and that. Perhaps this was, it was a preparation of the possibility that this could be a permanent thing and all that. And, and it's like, and yeah, and it's one of those things where, yeah, I think it's like that may be the case because, like, I remember a few months before I got to see Jen and Corinne perform opening for a Twine Tribute Act and whatnot, uh, my kitty cat Normal had to be put to sleep due to a tumor in one of her paws and uh, all that. Uh, and Normal was actually a month away from turning 11. She'd been my longest lip cat ever and I really thought she would at least make it into her teens until one father started bleeding and I didn't know why and I finally took her to the vet and it was like, you know, tumor, could be terminal and the vet talked about possibility of further, you know, further observation and possible third amputation of toes or well talk, which meant possibility of putting sleep and so I faced a tough decision. And the next appoint, scheduled appointment was set up for two days after this check. And so then I started taking some photos and videos for potential final photos and videos just in case the decision was going to be put to sleep. And I thought about it and prayed about it. And then in the morning, I made the tough decision. Because even though I actually had the money anyways for the surgical procedure and whatnot, it was like, what was the guarantee that, you know, she had that much long to live and all that. Plus, it's like, she didn't like going to cat carrier and my last couple of trips to the veterinarian and even that one on uh, the day where we took her to have her examined and the vet had like, uh, talked about possible surgery or a little talk. She'd actually said the English words of no and help. And she's not the only cat to have done anything like that on the way to the vet, because uh, there have been other cats that have said no on the way to the vet. I've even seen a video on YouTube. Well, actually, a couple of videos on YouTube of cats doing that. And somebody telling their cat, don't tell me no. And somebody else told me about their cat having said, help me on the way to the vet. And a friend of his in Germany had said that one of her cats had said nine on the way to the vet, which is German for no. But, uh, but yeah, just as my decision on uh, having them put to sleep was a tough decision to make. So, too, I can see, you know, how Craig and Tamara had a tough decision on whether or not, you know, to let Karen go. As well as the fact that, well, they did decide, you know, that when they pulled the plug on the machines that were keeping her alive in the next few days, 
it was like, yeah, I mean, they left it in God's hands, in which, you know, and that was my thought too, you know, that it's in God's hands, and whatever he decides, that's what it will be. And, you know, from watching the funeral, it's like, boom. I remember, you know, Jen made a statement about that. Yeah. Granted, practically at a rate, had practically as much as whatever she wanted, you know, when she was concerned about, you know, being, you know, souls being saved, and it was like, what else could she want? I mean, other than, I mean, granted, it sounded like, you know, she wanted to be able to eventually get married and have kids, and she had a boyfriend, too, as well, which, which is awesome to know, but she also, you know, kept herself pure and a virgin, and, you know, a virtue that a lot of people miss, and I'm still a virgin myself, you know, which, you know, it's done a lot of people if they knew what my age was and all that, and not to mention, you know, having come across, you know, like, I remember somebody that was, like, really extremely hostile had said to me, well, what if you die without ever getting married? And then I was like, well, then I'd die a virgin. And the hostile person called me stupid for that. And I'm like, what's so stupid about avoiding diseases that can kill you, like AIDS? Hepatitis, syphilis, and some other diseases that can kill people who have decided to uh, not wait till marriage for, well, you know what? Who have chosen not to keep themselves pure. And it's like, boom. Karen, she kept herself pure, and it's like, boom. When I look at how many things I have managed to accomplish, in spite of, you know, being on the autism spectrum, and the fact that, you know, there, well, when I first got diagnosed, it was said that, oh, I was never going to communicate, never going to learn to ride a bike, and, boom, look at me, it's like, I do know how to ride a bike. And I do communicate. I even write and record my own songs. And I've been in quite a few different countries because it's like, yeah. Uh, and not only that, I've even, you know, gotten to go to a couple other continents since uh, Germany where I went for two weeks and Austria and Czech Republic where I made, made short visits to during my two week trip to Germany on the continent of Europe, and then, uh, Israel, well, it's classified as being on the continent of Asia, even though it's, uh, in the region called the Middle East, and so many people don't usually use Asia to describe that, even though that is the exact continent, when you look at the exact map and the continents and all that. Plus the fact that Turkey, which is also in the Middle East, used to be called Asia Minor, plus the names Europe and Asia were devised by the Greeks, since Greece had at the time existed not just in Europe, but there were parts of Turkey that were also Greece, so like the Europeans had referred to the western area as Europe and the eastern area as Asia. Okay? But anyways, it's like, yeah. And I mean, I've, you know, gotten to travel to a bunch of different states as well, and I've gotten to meet a bunch of famous people, uh, most of them still alive. There's quite a few that have since uh, passed on and whatnot, but boom. As I was watching Corinne's, you know, funeral service, memorial service, whatever anybody wants to call it, on live stream. It's like, yeah, there were some things going through my mind, you know, when I, when I was thinking, you know, 
This girl was only 18. She didn't deserve to die so young. And she could have accomplished more. Yet, at the same time, I also had this feeling about that, you know, especially the fact that her parents decided, you know, to donate her organs to save some more lives. And whatnot. And the fact that the Lincoln family has, you know, still kept the faith and not let the faith be shattered by current stuff and whatnot. It was like, you know, this feeling came on to me like that. No matter how much I've gotten to accomplish in my life and whatnot, even though I never have been married, even though I was engaged in the, in the past, although the past engagement was a disaster that I'm glad didn't lead to marriage after all and whatnot. And, and it's a story for another time. And all that. It's like, not really relevant to the, this video, but still. You know, my thought was that, you know, in spite of how young Corinne was and all that. And it's like, wow, put it this way, you know, before I go any further and elaborate on this, it's like, you know, you remember the story of the widow's might when, and when I was in Israel, I even bought one of those up because of the widow's might. And yeah, that poor widow had very little to put in to the temple as an offering. But after she did that, Jesus, our Savior, said, I tell you the truth, this widow has put in more than anybody else because a bunch of rich people had put in only like a percentage of portion from their wealth, but this poor widow right here, she put in all the living she had. And this, you know, Bring me to the point that I was once again trying to elaborate on that boom. That no matter how much I've managed to accomplish in all my years on this planet and whatnot, that looking at how young Corinne was and what she did in her short life, and and then you know the fact that. She's in heaven now at such a young age, and I know that uh, she's with my kitty cat normal and my past pets and all that, and also with our Lord Jesus as well, and that sort of thing. And, and I'm thinking about, you know, a lot of things like, you know, when I, if, when I compare this to the thing on what it was like, it's like, I feel like Corinne actually really accomplished more than me. That's, you know, my feeling anyways, but yeah, she accomplished more than me. I mean, you can try to say, well, wait a minute, no. It's like, you can try to say to me, no, you accomplished more than her. I'm like, you know, okay. Anybody can try to say that, but but no, my feeling is, is that, I mean, no matter what all I've gotten to do, what all I've achieved in my life and whatnot, it's like, I feel that, no, in her short life, she really accomplished more than me. And I'm hoping that the recipients of her organs, that we kept alive, as a result, but they'll come to faith in Christ the Lord. And, you know, when I was looking at, you know, the thing on the letter that her parents had prepared for the recipients, you know, that told the recipients, please don't feel bad about the fact that she died in a car accident and that her death was the reason that you received her organs uh, because she'd want you to have her organs and she'd be more concerned about if you accept Christ as Lord and Savior uh, Versus, you know, her death or, well, I probably didn't get all the words correct, but I mean, I think anybody watching can, you know, see the point that I'm trying to make here and elaborate on, and it's like, yeah, um, but anyways, yeah, and it's like, 
I mean, I hope that anybody who's watching, you know, will really see what, you know, I'm trying to say here and all that. I'm, and yeah, if you are interested in uh, listening to my song and whatnot, please go into my uh, Bandcamp.com account and download it. It's completely free. It's called Young You Were. I mean, it's a really good song to listen to and all that. And, and I'm pretty sure the family has heard it already and whatnot. Although, whether or not they downloaded it, it's like, well, I don't know if they did or didn't, but, uh... But, uh, I did see something where, uh, Craig Lankowski posted a like, uh, in regard to the whole thing and all that. And so, yeah. And when you do look at, you know, car accidents and such young ages and whatnot, it's like, it's one of those things that can really make you think, and it's one of those things where, you know, it's like, and it makes me glad that Karen knew Jesus and that she accepted him as Savior before uh, her death, as I know that she's now in heaven, uh, in spite of how young she was, especially when you consider that it's like, Tomorrow is not always guaranteed and all that. I mean, boom. One of my cousins, unfortunately, died in a car accident at the age of 25, and it was actually one of those self related car accidents. And he actually did have kids, and he was married as well. But he was only 25 and his kids were so young that I don't think his kids even remember him at all. But it looks like according to Instagram and Facebook, at least one of them uh, had also followed Genevieve's career and music and whatnot, and have been, you know, fully aware of what happened to Corinne and all that. And, but, yeah, this is one of those things that can, you know, really make you think, and it's, and, yeah, it's like, and some emotions are going through for me right now, you know, as I'm, you know, Speaking, considering, you know, the length of this video and all that, and it's even longer than the video that Jenna put out a few days ago, but she was just, definitely justified in putting out a course, and, but yeah, it's really, you know, gives you a lot to think about, and, well, and if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior yet, you know, please, you know, at least give him a chance, you know. After all, it's like, you never know what could come. I mean, boom. Sure, we could have another 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years left to live, but you never know what could happen tomorrow. Even the rapture can always happen tomorrow. I'm not saying that the rapture is definitely happening tomorrow, but it's another one of those things that I even say that it can happen tomorrow if I was even knowing that it's going to happen. There's a lot of things that we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow until they happen. And, and all that. And yes, miracles can happen because there have been people that have survived through. Like I know other individuals who have been in car accidents that were not going to make it that did, but it's obvious that it was Corinne's time to go. And Time to go for the rest of us is going to come someday. And if you are saved, it can either be through rapture or death, but if you're unsaved, then death is a guaranteed way to go unless uh, you get saved, but boom. 
But I do think what can happen to you if you die unsafe, so, it, you know. I just hope anybody watching this, you know, will take things to heart and all that. And, and all right, you know. If Corinne, you know, wanted your soul saved and you really, you know, want to pay your respects to her and all that, coming to faith in Christ our Lord and getting saved, that's, you know, one good way to do it. It's a good way to pay your respect to a lot of people who died saved and whatnot. That, you know, if you're wanting to pay respect to anybody who died saved person is uh, in heaven now and all that. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope that uh, this has helped put you into a lot of perspective on things. Thank you for watching.